Tucked away in a tropical rainforest, among the tallest trees and the smallest frogs, lives the Yakuanoi people. Like many indigenous peoples, they've developed their own unique set of skills, practices and innovations. Carefully passed down from generation to generation, this traditional knowledge forms an invaluable part of their identity, as well as an economic and cultural asset for their entire community. One Yakuanoi innovation is particularly celebrated. Once a year, in late spring, the Yakuanoi come together to begin carefully harvesting the rare Surian shoot. The vibrant green shoots are carefully separated from the leaves and roots and placed in large clay pots. Under constant care, the mixture transforms into an oily brown paste and the Yakuanoi have a new batch of their skin marvel that can be used to heal burns or skin conditions like eczema or even be used as an effective moisturizer keeping skin looking youthful. Highly prized for its healing properties, the paste has always been bartered and traded in neighboring villages, and so for many years the Surian paste has formed the basis of the Yakuanoi community's economic livelihood. Word of the must-have Yakuanoi's paste traveled beyond the community. Always on the search of new and innovative resources, a cosmetics company researched the active ingredients of the Surian shoots. Impressed with its antibacterial benefits, they began to mass-produce an anti-aging face cream for distribution worldwide. Excited by its potential, the company quickly applied for a patent to protect its product and also registered a trademark using the name Yakuanoi. I had no idea that the traditional knowledge of my Yakuanoi people and the Surian shoot would have so much potential. Now in the city I call home, I couldn't help but notice advertisements everywhere for this new, miracle face cream. Having left my community years ago to study law, I couldn't help but wonder, what does intellectual property have to do with traditional knowledge? Can and should intellectual property law protect it? The company has made an investment in their products, so what would be fair in a case like this? In search of a trusted source of information, my first step led me to the World Intellectual Property Organization. It wasn't long before it became clear to me that the intellectual property system can be used strategically to protect and promote traditional knowledge. Patents can be revoked if inventions are not new. Trademarks can be challenged if they confuse people. But it was also clear that there are limits to the existing intellectual property system that fortunately countries at WIPO are working on. WIPO introduced me to the local intellectual property office in my country, which was also very informative. It was time for me to visit my village and collectively decide our approach. I organized a meeting and we agreed to talk with the cosmetics company. We expressed our concerns that their anti-aging cream used our traditional knowledge. We also explained how their trademark was given the impression that the cream was an authentic Yakuanoi product, benefiting my community. This was not the case. After a series of productive discussions, the company agreed to resubmit their patent and trademark applications with the Yakuanoi as co-owners. This meant that profits and employment opportunities would be shared. While these issues are difficult and community experiences vary, I could return home proud of my community's traditional knowledge and with a new awareness of the need to make smart use of intellectual property rights. The more our communities know about intellectual property, the better our position to protect and promote our unique cultures. <laughs>